how to take images that were created inside uh, uh, f from a Photoshop file and implement them into a CSS layout, a Dreamweaver uh, CSS layout. So currently we have um, several images that we're looking at. Let's make these extra large so you can take a look at them. Right? And these images will have, you have the banner, which is the top image, okay? We have the background image, which is going to be assigned to the body tag in CSS. And then you have the middle section. This looks bigger, but it's not bigger than this one up here. It's only because it shows everything that it can inside the one thumbnail size. So we have that as the content, because that's the name of our div box. And then later in the next, oh, and then we'll also show the um, gradient uh, image. So we'll apply the gradient across the x-axis using CSS. So, but we only needed a little strip. So the images have been pre-prepared already, um, and now we're going to go and implement them into the CSS. So let's jump on over to Dreamweaver. Now this is what the final site will look like. Okay, if I preview this in Firefox, um, I can see that this is the final look. So all those images that I just showed you, those are the images you see now on the screen. So you have your header, your banner area, you have that outside image, which is this left side and this right side, and then you have that middle content piece. So that middle content piece will show us um, that middle imagery as a background image. And then of course you have the background layer, which is the gradient. So no matter what resolution I'm at on my monitor, if I'm at a really high, higher resolution, that gradient continues and continues all the way to the left and all the way to the right. All right? And um, so if I want to see where those actual images are placed in the structure of my CSS layout, okay, that Dreamweaver is going to provide us, you can see that I have a body tag which has the gradient across it, right? And then I've created a div called wrapper, okay, which is the outside piece. Now the reason I have that is to blend with the actual um, gradient. So I have both a gradient and an outside wrapper. You'll see this as we go along. I think the biggest thing to take away here is that I know how to apply imagery as CSS backgrounds to this div box model that we've been talking about. Um, and then here's your container. Um, I don't have anything assigned to that image, but here's the div class equals content. And if I mouse over this in Firebug, I can see, oh, there's the image. That's that middle piece. So it has some of those outside images that it's connecting to to make it one. Um, so as we go along, you'll see it's pretty amazing how things can be pieced together. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So let's dive right in. Now, I need to know, first of all, what type of layout this is. So if I go to File New and I decide to use one of Dreamweaver's layouts, okay, um, I need to know that this is going to work best with a one column fixed centered and um, header and footer. I'm going to delete the footer. You saw in the demo there, or the sample file that I already had the footer in there, but I could delete it later. But I need the header section to put that banner on the top piece. So I'm going to choose one of these layouts knowing that I'm going to be modifying and altering this layout as I go along. Okay? so. For example, the footer, we're going to delete the footer later, maybe we'll put in a different footer, who knows. But okay, so I'm going to pick one of the layouts and then I'm going to choose to, of course, write my CSS style styles into the CSS style sheet, an external style sheet, not into the head section. The only time you'd ever write your styles into the head section would be if you had one page and one page only. But how rare is that? I mean, normally we have more than one page that constitute the makeup of our website, correct? So let's uh, take a look at creating a new CSS style sheet with the one column fixed centered header and footer. So I'm gonna click create here. Now it's asking me, here's the sample files that you just saw. I'm gonna create a, um, another style sheet name and the old one was called styles. Um, this one we'll call styles demo okay 
Um, let's click save. We have to stop opening and closing the door, right? Messing up our video, but that's okay. <laughs> um, save. And now I'm going to take the demo that I have here and I'm going to alter it by adding those images via CSS. So I don't have the HTML uh, file saved yet. Right now you can see up at the top it says styles dash demo dot CSS. So I have a style sheet attached to it. So let's go to file, save as, and I'm going to call this. Um, the last one's called index, so I can't call that index. So I'm just going to call this Warhammer dash demo. All right, and I'm saving it in the same file as the previously completed lesson, um, just so I can utilize that images folder with those images in there. Okay, so now if I want to see what this current um, uh, layout looks like, I can go and preview that in Firefox and it will load up here and show me let's turn Firefox Firebug off okay so that's what the layout looks like so let's go ahead and start assigning images and see how that current layout which is a default layout from Adobe will start to change itself and it'll change itself when we start adding these images. So the first image I'm going to add is an easy one. It's going to be the header image, the image that's going to be at the top. All right. So I'm going to click this. Uh, I, uh, the layout that we're given here gives us an image in here for the logo, but it's inserted as an image, not as a CSS background image. So I'm going to delete that image. OK, let's delete that. And let's look at our styles panel and look for that div section. All right. What I mean by a div section is if we go back to split and look at this top area is that this style is going to be written to the class name header for this div right here. So this div that says div class header ending div it's going to be applied a CS, uh, an image as a background via CSS. So we need to find this style called header which is a class format. So let's go over to the CSS rules in the CSS styles panel and there is header right there. So I can add properties down here or I can double click on class header and I can assign those via category. So if I go to background, all right, I can see there's a background color set but I don't need a background color set because I'm going to fill it in with an image. So I can just delete what's there inside there. And where it says background image, if I hit browse, I can go directly to my images. Now, if I'm not in my site root, I can click site root. And I am in my site root, so it keeps me right there. Go into the images folder and choose the image named banner. All right, so if I click banner, click OK. All right, and let's click OK. All right, now you'll notice that the image didn't fill up the entire div box here, right? The height is incorrect. That's because when you use images um, uh, applied via CSS, the box will not stretch in size according to the image size. So we actually have to force it to be a little higher. So what, I'm going to go back into that header styling, of the class, right? Go into background, go to browse, and I'm going to take a look at the height of that image. So just by going in here, I can see, oh, it was 960 by 158. So I need to set a height of 158 in order to stretch that div class header box to the right size. So you can do that in the box category, and I'm going to set the height to 158. If I hit apply, I can see that it just stretched itself, and that's okay. So now I've got the first piece of my website here. Now if I preview that in Firefox, save my changes, now I can see the top piece is done. Right? And now I'm going to create the wrapper piece, the piece around the outside. All right? And that is going to have to be in the, well, if I, if, since I have a gradient and a wrapper image, I have two images, you can't apply two images around the outside. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another div box. I always call these things div boxes, right? Because they're, they're following the box model and their div tags. So that's just kind of what I get used to saying. Um, so what we're going to do is if you look at our code here, right, you have a whole bunch of HTML code which is inside your container, right? So this is actually the div area. Let's go to here, ending the container, right? So this is the uh, div information right in here that is the container right there. Oops. Go back up to there. I didn't, didn't select enough. So if I highlight all of that, that is actually the div that is a container. And that's just a simple collapsing of code information. It doesn't change your code. just lets you organize it. So um, that div box, which is called class container, contains all the information like the head, the header section, the, uh, you know, the, the class called uh, header, the class called content. All those boxes are in there. If we had sidebars, those would be in there as well. So what I need to do is um, I can assign one of those images to the body tag, but I need another one that is going to be assigned uh, that's going to wrap around this div class equals container. Because uh, you remember in the preview I showed you the div class equals wrapper. <clears throat> so I'm going to select this little piece of code chunk and it's easier to collapse the code and then select it like this and wrap a div around it than it is to try to position it in the beginning and then find out where at the bottom that ending div might have gone. Um, yes, question? Yeah, that's always finding the end tags is always can be difficult. Um, the best way to uh, keep track of them is to have comments that tell you where the ending div tag is. Also, in Dreamweaver, you can go to commands and you can do apply source formatting. And what that does is that lines everything up. So you'll notice that when we have our current div tags. Um, some of them are indented. So line, line 12 here, the div class header, gets indented some because it's inside the div class equals, contain, div class equals container. Right? So that's one way to, to keep things uh, lined up. The other way is to actually use comment tags. So you can see right before the ending div tag, you put a comment in there right here called end header. That's why it's in this light gray, end class header. So let's go ahead and wrap that div tag called container which is all of that let's wrap that in a div called class equals wrapper so I'm gonna just do insert layout objects div tag and let's create a class called wrapper because that's what it's gonna do it's gonna wrap around there um, now I can go ahead and start I can create the class wrapper click OK now but then I'd have to go back and add the rule for wrapper, right? So why don't I just do that now and get it all done in one step? So it, and it's asking me, here's the important part. If you've selected your text information, the choice it will give you would should be wrap around selection. So if that's the case, okay, I'm on the right track here. Now I'm gonna click new CSS rule. All right. And is it writing to the style sheet? That's all I need to know is I'm creating a class name wrapper and it's writing the information to the styles-demo.css. Let's click OK. And let's go over to the background category and let's choose that background image. All right, so I'm gonna click browse in here and back inside background image. And here's the image that I want. It's this BG dot jpeg 1360 pixels wide by 866 pixels high all right so um, if we choose that now we don't have to set any height or anything to this we just want to choose it as it is so I'm gonna say okay that's the image I want but what we do have to do is we have to tell it not to repeat itself because it's on the outer portion of the web uh, browser so if the, the screen is larger, 
it'll start to show that image again. Unlike the banner area, because the banner area, we have a defined width to it, and we have a defined height to it. So it's not going to stretch unless we put content in that box, which we're never going to put content that's going to stretch it. And that's why we don't really have to put a, a, a no repeat on the banner box. But on this box, we have to tell it um, background repeat, no, don't repeat. All right. So I'm going to hit apply. Um, or I'm just going to hit OK because I'm actually in code view right now. So then if you click OK here, then um, let's take a look at what we have. Preview in Firefox. Save your changes. Save your changes. All right. And now you can see that this background image has been added. OK. Now we're going to do a couple things on here to, to straighten it out. Okay, cool. So let's add the other ones. All right. So what we want to add now is the background image. Oh, one class I forgot to put on that is you notice we were out here and it's not as I stretch, you see what happens? It stays on the left, doesn't it? You notice that? So now what we need to do is we need to have that stay in the center. Okay? So let's go back and add that style. So in the wrapper class, go back into there and go to the background category. And we're going to look at the background position of X because X is the X axis, correct? Straight, horizontal. So we want to choose that to be center. So if I hit apply now and choose that as center, um, I also want the Y axis. I want to make sure it's all the way to the top. All right. So now when I click OK and go preview that in Firefox, save. Now, now check it out. See, now it's not moving. It's staying in the center, wrapped around that middle content piece, and also um, uh, uh, moving all the way to the top on the y-axis, which is your vertical axis. So let's add one more last image, okay? Well, actually, two more images, which is the content piece and the background gradient piece. So I'm going to add the content piece first. That's the piece in the middle. And all of these we're adding as CSS background images. So let's go back to Dreamweaver and let's go find the content class right here. Double click that. Go to background. Click browse for background image and my content piece I named it content. So let's click that and on this one if I don't have enough content I'm gonna make sure that I push the height to full height so that I can see all of my image. If I don't I'll have to rely on my content to stretch the height of that box. So let's so that's going to be 772 pixels high. So let's click that, choose that image, go to the box category, and choose 772 pixels in height. Click OK, and let's go look at what it looks like. Preview in Firefox. Save my changes. Ah, looking great. The only thing I have to do now is um, create some large mar or padding inside that content box to make that sample text not overlap those images. All right? And we'll worry about that in the next lesson. So here we have one more image to add. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. And we're going to add this one to the body tag. So if you double click body tag and go to background, we're going to take out that color. All right. The color we're going to use is going to be the bottom color of the image that we have chosen um, to represent our background image or our background gradient. So we'd actually have to take that in the Photoshop and use your eyedropper color and find out what color that is, and that will be this color right in there. All right. For now, we'll just leave it this really light gray. I'm not sure. We'll just put it at CCC for right now. 
All right. And now um, click browse for your background image and your background image is BG gradient. Click OK. And what we want to do now is we want to repeat that image across the X axis, correct? So that it just duplicates itself over and over and over again horizontally across the X axis. And we don't need any positioning or anything. Click OK and preview that in Firefox. Save your changes and there you go. Now it's repeated itself but we can add that one down to not repeat across the y-axis and we're good. So that was a first simple look at how to go about um, creating your uh, imagery as CSS assigning imagery via CSS uh, in Dreamweaver.